Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This is a second part of my testing series and in this video we will be covering more topics. So let's begin. In this video we will be covering these following topics. The first one is software development life cycle. Then we will be covering the software testing life cycle followed by defect life cycle or the bug life cycle. After that we will be covering the levels of testing and finally we will be covering the functional versus non-functional testing. So let's begin. So what is software development lifecycle? Software development lifecycle is basically a step by step process to develop a software or application. This is also known as application lifecycle development. So in order to develop a software you need to follow steps like for example first you need a requirement against which you will be developing a software. Once you develop a software you need to test and you need to ensure that your software is working as per the requirement and finally you will be deploying the software so let's see what are the steps here so first thing is that requirement gathering and the analysis you need to gather the requirement you need to analyze the requirement first after that you need to design the system here designing the system means that you're designing the architecture of the software okay once you will do that then you'll start implementing your requirement in terms of the code once you are done with this one, you will be testing your software. Okay. And after testing the software, you will be deploying the software on the live production environment. And after that, because the people will be using your software and you need to maintain your software for the users. So final stage of this software development lifecycle is the maintenance. Now let's move towards the next topic here. Again, so, uh, second topic is basically software testing life cycle. So what is software testing life cycle? It's basically a life cycle which contains a set of activities which we conduct during our testing process. So when we are testing the software, obviously we have to perform different set of activities. Now let's discuss what are these activities and how you need to perform. So again, the first thing is that you need to understand the requirement, right? If you understand the requirement, so based on that requirement, you will be start planning how to test that particular requirement. So once you have planned about it, then you start developing the test cases against the requirement. And once the test cases are ready, then you will set up an environment where you will execute your test cases. And once you have executed the test cases, you have a complete report. How many test cases are passed? How many are failed? and how many bugs we have and what is the nature of those bugs and you would be sharing a testing closure here and you will be sending a report so this is a very simple life cycle where you understand the requirement based on the requirement you will be planning developing the test cases setting up the environment for the testing executing the test and finally sending the report which is a testing closure activity now let's move towards the next topic now, what is a defect or a bug life cycle, which is a very common question asked in the interviews. So defect life cycle is basically a life cycle through which bug or defect goes from different status to track when it was found and when it was closed. As a development team, we need to track of the bugs when they are identified, what are their current status, either they, they are fixed or not when they got fixed, when they got tested, when they got verified. So we need that to follow. We need to track. So how we can do that? Simply, we have a very common set of uh, status. You can add as per your requirement, but these are the common status you can follow. So as soon as you found out a bug, it will be moved to a new state. Okay. And after that, it will be moved to the assigned. Assign means that it would be assigned to respective team, development team, and they will now start working on this one. After this one, either they will mark it as a not a bug. If they find out that this is not a bug, they will mark it as not a bug. Else, what else they can do? They simply mark it as a duplicate. Maybe you or, you or your team has already reported the same bug previously and he or the developer simply marked it as a duplicate of the previous one. Then what else developer can do is that they can developer or the project management can mark it as a deferred. So deferred means that this bug is not in a priority and this might be fixed in the upcoming releases or the patches. 
so defer doesn't mean that it will not be fixed it will be fixed but it will not fix immediately not right now and if the developers find out that this is an actual bug they will fix it out and your status would be fixed they will mark it as a fixed for you and then you will pick in the testing and you will be verifying that either this bug is fixed or not if this is a fixed or not depending on that there will be two statuses if you found out that this is not fixed yet you will reopen this bug and again this will be assigned to a development team if this is a fixed we will mark it as verified and we will close this bug finally so this is the common status you need to know and you can add more statuses if required but these are the common ones you should be knowing about the defect life cycle now let's move towards the next topic levels of testing now what are the levels of testing levels means that when testing needs to be done there are four levels of testing levels are sequence and step by step so what are the levels so whenever you have been handed over for the testing so first thing you what you need to do so you would be doing a unit testing because when we talk about the development itself developments are done in the chunks right so developer one has developed one chunk for you for example login chunk you have touched the login okay and that would be known as unit testing this is the first level the second level is integration testing when different chunks units or the components merge together okay then you need to test that either they are working fine when they are integrated with each other either, either, either. okay and then we have a system testing when all the units are integrated and they formed a complete system then as a tester we need to perform end-to-end -end system testing and finally when we are ready we will be doing the acceptance testing now let's see who is doing what so testing is basically your testing is basically an individual testing unit and this is done by the developers then integration testing is done by developers and both by the testers and then we have a system testing it is done by the testers and finally we have acceptance testing which is done by the client or your customer right so we need because software develops in chunks they got integrated they form a system that's how we need to follow these steps we need to follow these levels when we are testing the application now uh, let's move towards the next topic of this one which is the final topic and which is functional versus non-functional testing so when we talk about the functional testing which means that you are testing the functionality of the application for example developer has developed a login feature so you would be testing that either login is working fine or not whereas non-functional testing refers to a non-functional aspect of the software application and when we talk about the non-functional i'm giving you the same example here for example developer has developer login and you tested that it is working fine and users are able to log into the system this is a functional aspect and now if we talk about non-functional aspect we need to check the performance of this feature for example and you need to check that if thousands hundred thousands of the users are trying to log into the system how your system will behave what will be the performance of your system will your system be able to handle that much of the load in terms of the user or not so these kind of testing like performance testing security testing usability testing uh, these all are known as a non-functional testing in non-functional testing we are not testing the functionality we are just taking how our system will behave non-functional aspects it can be performance load stress security and so on thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you like our content then do like comment share and subscribe our channel once again thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial